Hello everyone, this is gonna be the beginning to a screencast that I'll be doing. It'll be my first published screencast. And we can see on screen at this point a picture of a famous mathematician, a very well-known 19th century mathematician. I have mentioned him earlier in this video, and you may be able to guess. His name is Gauss, of course. He is my first favorite mathematician. And you can just, I just decided to, to put his picture up there because uh, the 30th of April was actually his birthday. So I just, well, to celebrate, well, of course, how, how could you resist putting a, a picture of Gauss as your desktop background, right? Anyway, um, so you can see in this wonderful hyperbolic geometry, we have unique figures and polygons, all right? So, in fact, there is a brilliant program written in Java that you can download for free. It is called non-Euclid, just simply non-Euclid, all right? And it simulates the hyperbolic plane very, very well. So I'm going to activate, I'm going to start up this program. It's a, it's a JAR file, so it, it runs on Java. And, whoa, hold on. This is, this is a bit unbalanced. Just give me a moment. So, yeah, this, this is going to be hyperbolic geometry. This is just this greeting message that you get when you start. And I'll explain everything in a moment. All right. I encourage you to download this this program at home. It simulates hyper hyperbolic plane very, very well. And it was published by, I'm pretty sure, a, a, a professor at a university, which is very, very interesting, very authentic. So uh, we have this... This model of, uh, of the projective plane, which I told you about earlier, it's basically a circle. We see this this broad black circle, and um, I think I'll make this more clear for you to see, so you can see the whole thing. Uh, right, so, and we have lines. In fact, from our perspective, those lines look curved, right? Uh, the, the line segment, I should say. No, line. They are, it is, it does constitute a line in this geometry. Uh, e... I, you know, we, we have the, the two points E and I, and it, it happens to be that I, uh, that A and J are also lying on this, this line. Um, and we see that it's a, a curved line from our perspective. But what's interesting is, if we were in this geometry, it would look perfectly straight to us. And we would be able to see, we would be able to clearly identify that it's a, a straight line if we were in you know, inside this geometry. That's what makes it so interesting. Um, so, um, I'll just show you some interesting aspects of this program. We can construct different things, of course, measure different lengths and angles. And so, just to start, I'm going to say edit move point. And so I can move any one individual point and see how it affects the image as a whole, or the... the artwork as a whole, if you consider it an art. It's kind of a, a piece of art, if you think about it. it. It's comparable to a piece of art. But in all seriousness, um, we can say edit move point. And this green kind of figure or line or whatever word to use uh, to describe it, it's very interesting. You, you might kind of instinctively predicts that we call it something like a circle, or, you know, it, it's com comparable to a, a circle. And, in fact, you are absolutely right. It is a circle. You might think something's a bit off about it. And uh, I'm here to show you something interesting about it. So I'm going to move around point A and see how it affects the whole entire circle. And what we see is... It appears as though it's in, sort of inflating in an odd pattern. So, I'm sure you can tell already, It's it looks rather obvious that if A is the center of the circle, then we see that A appears to be very close to, you know, I and O and H, these three points, than it is to P and G. 
and, and even B. You know, the, the lengths appear to be very much different. But in fact, if we check the, the left panel here, it gives us these different lengths. The length of AB, we know, is 2.201. And it's the same for all of these lengths. That's what makes this so interesting. AB, the length from A to B, which I think means the, the length along this line, actually. I'm fairly sure is equal to all these other lengths, so a to g, and the length of that is equal to a to m, equal to a to i, equal to a to o, equal to a h, equal to a n. So all of these lengths are equal, which makes them all really radii, if you think about it, or really radii, and a is indeed the center of the circle. I, I just wanted to demonstrate that for you. All of these numbers are equal using the metric of the hyperbolic space. So, as long as, you know, as long as A is the center of the circle, then these lengths will be equal, and... So that's very cool. And so we can do really pretty amazing things in this, uh, geometry. But anyway, um, that's just a starting thing thing I wanted to start with. And we can, as you can imagine, have polygons in this geometry. This could be a quadrilateral uh, pentagon or something like that. And in fact, I think I'll show you that. I'll say File New, and I'll construct just a few line segments to start with. Right, okay, now that that's a line segment. See, that's very interesting. It's really a, a bent line. We, we think of it as a bent line, but it's just actually not bent at all. It's perfectly straight. Just bear with me. <laughs> so we have a line segment from C to D. That's, I'm, I'm just making these line segments. And then back from D to A. So it's, it's I guess, if you want to call it a closed figure, yeah, it's, I mean, it seems perfectly valid, perfectly continuous. And so we can call this a quadrilateral. And that would be, well, that would be that. There are, you know, all kinds of things we can do in this geometry. But arguably, the most interesting part of this geometry is known as the ideal hyperbolic triangle. The ideal hyperbolic triangle, all right? A special kind of triangle. Now, please pay attention, because this will, this will amaze you, and, and perhaps even enlighten you about the beauty of mathematics. So I'm going to say, file new. This is a very good demonstration you can do. Uh, draw a line segment. And I'm gonna say... And just for fun, I'm, I'm gonna place these points very, very close to the end, uh, to the edge. Or the, the end of this plane, basically. So here's point A. And our second point will be point B, right? Also near the edge. And we see this, just this red line segment connecting both of them. Seems all valid. And so I'm going to connect B to a third point, C, right here. And another curved line from our perspective. And then one last one from C back to A. All right, now we have a triangle here. This, don't be confused or, or misled. This is a triangle. This is certainly, and it's a very interesting type of triangle. Or at least it's it, it's an approximation of a very interesting type of triangle. And we'll get to the details later. But first, just the basics. Uh, we mathematicians call polygon ideal in this wonderful hyperbolic geometry if, well, if and only if, all of its angles are equal to zero degrees in measurement. All right, now at first you might just dismiss that as complete ridiculousness, but in all seriousness, this is truth. Uh, we can say measure the angle, and the angle, just, just focusing on this uh, vertex, A, well, I'm going to say vertex C, A, B, that's the angle, and it's, well, it's 0.8 degrees. Now, this is only an approximation, and we'll get to why it's only approximation very soon, but 
bear with me. So ABC, the measure of that angle, 0. 0.6 degrees. So we're seeing very low values. And 0. 0.7 degrees for that third one. Right. So you may be thinking right now, well, this is... This is almost ridiculous. I mean, think about it. In, in Euclidean geometry, we have the triangle sums theorem, which is a, a very uh, nice formal proof of the fact that the angles inside a triangle must add up to 180 degrees, all right? That, that nice solid number, 180 degrees, definitive. But in this hyperbolic geometry, it kind of... You could, you could think of it as kind of breaking the rules, so to speak. Um... And there's some truth to that. It, it doesn't really follow the same rules as Euclidean geometry. And that's okay. That's what you need to keep in mind. There are different rules for hyperbolic geometry. And we'll get to exploring them. Uh, because there are several significant facts about ideal triangles. And that's what I'm going on to, to show you in the following clips. So, uh, so let's get to that, shall we?